thought it would be fun to share a new design with folks at the early stages uh, and we'll be able to share a couple of updates as this evolves. A theme of this summer has been exploring ways of holding more water in the landscape and having some value along with it. We made a video a little ways back talking about a tub that we set up uh, where frogs have taken up shop. It seems like there are green frogs in there. They actually laid some eggs. And so the idea of creating spaces that are habitat for wild beings that can also create uh, fertility and be sources of irrigation water for our systems feel very valuable. And of course, for those of you that follow the channel, you know that a really dominant theme of all the work we do is keeping prices very low and making it as accessible to other folks as possible. So to that end, um, I put together this uh, idea that I've had for a little while. I'm still working out the kinks, uh, but this so far is about $10 for uh, a pool that can be an aerated habitat space for wildlife like frogs, a space for drinking water for squirrels and birds, which we'll be uh, talking about, and a way for us to get irrigation as well. So I'm going to go through this and talk about how I made this. A little ways back, I set in motion a trial in our driveway to produce uh, duckweed. I'll link to that video here. And it worked. It grew duckweed for a little while. But what I found was that um, having that space in the full blazing sun next to asphalt um, and also being a little bit distant from the ability to refill it with water, it warmed up very quickly. Uh, evaporation was actually a very challenging force with it and it wasn't deep enough or well made enough to hold water as a buffer or have enough of a battery. So I disassembled that project and I'm actually reusing the 6 mil greenhouse poly from that and all I did was very simply here on a flat surface, this is a, I guess there was an old garage here at some point, cleaned this area up and I laid up these paving stones. These actually came from a clean fill site. There was a pile of them that I rummaged through. Once they were laid up and relatively level, I laid in this greenhouse poly. I folded it over on itself and put some stones in the corners just to get the poly to hold a little bit more cleanly. So you can see here's one of the stones. So I'm just real gentle as I go with it because I think it is possible to rip this if I'm rough with it. And then the poly laid on top of the stones, I took some off cuts of locust lumber that I had laying around from a sawmill and laid those down to keep the, the poly pinned and I think to make it look kind of nice. And we'll be making update videos where I show some of the extra layers of detail that are going to be added on to this. But for now, I'm filling this up actually using the hand dug well that we have in the garden. And a little solar pump that fills a cistern. And so it's going to be very easy to pretty passively keep this topped off as necessary. So I'm letting that fill in right now. And what this is going to do is replace uh, our existing compost tea bubbler. If you'll follow me for a moment. I made a video in detail about this whole setup, which you can check out. And it's worked nicely for us for a while, and frogs really enjoy being in here. This is a space where we can take plants and dip them into an aerobic compost tea and have it drain back out. So we have this nice, fertile, uh, aerated tea. But what I've found is that the air pump that runs this, being mounted right here, every time I'm out here working, I'm listening to this. It's not that fun. And so my thought was, what if we could have uh, an irrigation pool that is a little cleaner and simpler, habitat for frogs and such, and then a really robust compost aerobic tea system that are separated but next to each other. And that's what this is all about. So this 55 gallon cutoff drum will be where we do our really serious aerobic compost tea production. And this will be mainly for irrigation and habitat. 
and I just invested in an 8 port bubbler which I'll plug in and show you. I still have to lay out the electric properly. This is more powerful than that other bubbler and it has 8 ports so now I've set up where there are four air stones in the four corners of this and I still have four more ports that can be used for compost tea and for softwood propagation. And all in all, I can reuse every part of this for other projects later on. It can be disassembled in the fall and the total cost is less than $10 for the layout. About 60 bucks for the bubbler and the tubes. Maybe you want to show the bubbler itself because yeah, you sure. can't really see it. Yeah, what I don't want to do is suggest that this is the best bubbler or anything like that. I'm not sponsored by these folks. And um, I just I did some research online. This one's Active Aqua, the AAP A25L. I can link that in the description. Um, or we don't know how good it is yet. Right, we don't know <laughs> if it's great, so I'm not recommending it. I just plugged this in today, right? Uh, so far, so good. But we'll see, and we'll do some updates on this. We're gonna create um, some ecosystem diversity in here. There'll be sticks and stones, um, some old rotting logs, some nooks of soil, and we'll get this ripping with the compost tea session and break that down into multiple videos. But basically this will be a, a wetland area for us to do a lot of production in here. We'll share notes as we go along, but food for thought.